what we've done here is this is basically a tribute to Tom Bearden mm. and his, his life's work okay. and my life's work uh, in electromagnetics. So yeah, everybody always asked, is it possible to get the energy you know, from a different time domain, which Tom talks about. Okay, John, this is, wow, it's enormous. Yeah. What well, are you going to talk about today? One of the biggest monopoles we've ever built. Yeah. With, um... How, how big is it? It's 12 feet high. It's 12 feet, so... The diameter? Yeah, it's 12 yeah. feet in diameter, and the wheel weighs close to 300 pounds. Wow. With this added weight on both sides, it's probably 450, because the magnets are very heavy. This is a steel-backed plate. What, what is this in the middle? That is a uh, self-regaging idling magneto, which means that if it goes above the speed that it's rotating at right now, it generates to put power back to help recharge. But then you have this coil, the master, and two slaves on both sides. Okay. And all these coils, I want everybody to understand that everything is paralleled in this system. All three coils are in parallel, which means they're all hooked together. Now, what you're actually watching here as it runs around here is this piece of equipment right here has to supply 42 pounds of torque to turn the wheel. Okay. And it's supplying that by regaging these star magnets that are by, see the dots? Yes, yes I do. Each time the dot comes across on timing dot number one here. Uh-huh. See? Yes. The, this, each, each time the dots come around. Yeah. And these, these dots line up, see? It fires five times for 10 poles. Okay, so every other pole. Yeah, yeah, so every other pole, but there's a reason for that. Each time these dots line, line up, there's a little regaging impulse here. Yes, see? I see it. Yeah. And that little impulse, the first flash, is the little bitty spike that, that Tom talks about. That Tom yeah. talks about to change the magnetic fields, the motor magnetic fields. Right? So yeah. we can look at it as motor, you know, as an electrical motor, yes. but not quite, because, because as it does that, it develops that little spike, mm -hmm. switches these permanent magnets that are on the back. In other words, it flips their direction. And by doing that, it self-powers itself around the wheel. So. It flips the magnetic field, it gets the little bitty spike, it gets an impulse. Can you see it shake just a little bit every time that it fires on that impulse? Watch. Look very closely. What, what shakes? The, the dots? The, the, Those things, okay. The magnet shakes, see them? That's that little bitty spike trying oh, to okay. flip in the magnetic field. See it shaking? Yeah, it's just, yeah. It's vibrating, very right. So, what happens is there's a metal back here and there's a metal back right here. Mm -hmm. And it makes, it fires this and makes a U-shaped a U-shaped magnetic field that gets shorted out against the next magnetic field. Okay. So when it fires that and the magnets flip direction, they automatically get sucked in to this next pole with zero current. There's no current. Okay, so it hits that dot there and it, it fires and then by the time well, it reaches see it this, here. this pole see, here. Come it, over here. 
can see this dot? Mm -hmm. When this dot meets this dot, yep. see? It fires and that's when it shakes. Yeah. So that little bitty spike that Tom Bearden talks about that's this big. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. Reverses the fields in the magnets. Actually reverse them. These are barium ferrite magnets. They've been here since 1984. Okay. They were cut for me by AZ magnets in 1984. So remember the work that's on Tom Bearden's website. Yeah. About Radis, uh -huh. about the regaging magnetic shoes. Right. Well, the reason that, that all that material is limited is because you could make a self-rotating permanent magnet motor that didn't burn any energy. And that's what you're watching right here with 44 foot pounds of torque. Okay. Okay. So every time you can see it here, the bright blue is the regauge. Mm -hmm. That's energy coming back for nothing. The first blink Yeah, I see. It's the, a quick blink and then it's The quick it's, blink it's is the little spike around. that yeah. flips the magnetic field. Right. Okay? Right. And that's accomplished. It's real sharp. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a trigger circuit. Inside there's a disc with five magnets on it. And then there's a Hall effect device and this is a this is a, a switch inside here that Ron Cole and I developed called the Bedini Cole switch. That's used on all the window motors. That's used on some of the monopoles. It's being used on this monopole because of its enormous amounts of power modified. So what's happening here, Pat, is here's the little bitty, here's the current meter, because mm -hmm. the big motor, this motor is not running yeah. right now. What's turning this wheel is that permanent magnet when it flips poles. Yeah. And so what you're seeing here is you're seeing no current here, zero. Right. And you're seeing no current in the recovery whatsoever. So these batteries are completely zero. Except, watch. Ah, okay. When we turn, now earlier, I took, these are 36 volt batteries. That's, that's three 12 volt batteries in series mm -hmm. for 36 volts. Mm -hmm. There's a Fadot current that Tom talks about, a Delta Fadot current, which is a zero current, which mm -hmm. is a current that's not fully understood by all, all the engineers. Yeah. They, they don't deal with this because, see, here's the problem. You're an electrical engineer. I'm a physicist. And the next person's a doctor. Do we talk to each other? No. Not if we can help it, right? <laughs> but we don't. Yeah. So electrical engineering does not talk to physics. Yeah. And the physicists do not talk to the electrical engineers, unless they're golf buddies and they're out on a golf field somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's very, what you have to do to deal with all this is you have to have a real open mind and you have to sort of be a jack of all trades and you have to keep focused on these particular little fields that deal with this type of electromagnetics, which is scalar electromagnetics, or what Tom likes to talk about energy from the vacuum. So since he's 80 years old, and it's his birthday, mm -hmm. happy birthday, Tom, because yeah. here's the machine that he's, been talking about. that he's been talking about for years. And so it's basically a tribute to Tom and all his hard work. Yeah. I'm sorry if most engineers get his book and go, this is hogwash, because it's not. Yeah. 
if you understand exactly what these fields are that are circulating right now, you can drive this 300 pound wheel continuously at this amount of RPMs for no power being drained from the battery. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically what do we have, Pat? We have a motor that's using the same thing as we talked about in our early DVDs, which is, it's like a nerve firing. So the nerve fires, it jumps the gap, and then it's translated into electromagnetic energy and your arm moves. So we fire a little bitty spike from the control unit in here, yeah. which you can see right here again, I'm gonna point it out again. This little flash first. It's like a double flash. Is it a, is yeah, it, it's, it's, it's very quick. Uh, yeah. It's very quick yeah. and it's a set of instructions okay. to tell the permanent magnet fields what to do, right. to push back. So what, what we wanna have happen if it, this is what was a North Pole, we want that to flip to a south pole, so we have to give it, we have to give that magnet a set of instructions to do it. Mm -hmm. And the spike, this little flash with the little timing wheel up there is a, a set of instructions when this little pie-shaped magnet comes across the yeah. pole. So that looks about the same size as the magnets that are on That's there. right. Okay. So the, the, the magnets are barium ferrite magnets, and you can see that because they got a rust color on them, Sam. Mm -hmm. They're red. So see how they 